two hundred and seven percent through. All right. Well, I guess over the hype now. train. So we have a drink from Seattle. Cocktail. Yeah. What are we drinking? It is a Bing Bang. A Big Bang. Are you okay? A Big Bang. <laughs> Did you say a Bing Bang already? Isn't that your drink? Bang. Oh, I don't really drink Bang that often. Oh, uh, we chose Big Bang for Fourth of July fireworks. What I need to talk about, I got okay. a, a a bone to pick with Fourth of July fireworks. Okay. And um, this has white rum, dark rum, orange juice, pineapple juice, simple syrup, triple sec, and bitters. Cool. Now, yep, they gave us um, like three because they forgot that we didn't have a show yesterday. So I was like, oh, I'm going to have one. Except that's what I was drinking yesterday, not oh. realizing it was supposed to be a shot. And I was uh, sipping on it as a cocktail. You were a little loopy yesterday. It was something, let me tell you. A little loopy. What's up, Dave from Everett? Uh, and Rach at the beach. I'm glad that you can watch live today. I guess that's her name. Oh, it is her name. Ratch at the beach. Definitely Rach. Well, it says Ratch, right? <laughs> That's r- how I would. It doesn't, there's no E in there. It's not Rach. Right. Um, so, again. Ra- what do you mean? I can't. That's right. If you were calling someone named Rachel Rach, you wouldn't have the E. That would be Rache because the English language doesn't make any sense. I don't know. That's Rach at the beach. That's <laughs> not what it says to me. Uh, thank you, Monica from Phoenix, for subscribing with Prime. Appreciate that. And Melissa K88 for the same subscription with Prime. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's so cool. So Lenny from Queens said his niece performed at the Disney World uh, Imagination Campus last week. We were not there for that. Yeah, we missed that, unfortunately. Uh, Crystal said, hi, I never get you all live. Y'all broke my bank account with you look great stuff. LOL. Crystal from Tennessee. Just know it goes to a good cause. Yeah. Us. A broken <laughs> bank account. It's going from one bank account to another, hopefully. <laughs> what, Carla Marie? I was laughing at that. Oh. But also, um, you get to spread positivity around the world. Let's see. 18 sec. Nope. 15 seconds left. We're at 290% of hype train level five. And now it's done. Anthony will explain how to win the beach waiver. Yeah. So now that the hype train is over, all you've got to do is type in exclamation point and the word enter. And it should work. You should get a little notification that says, or something in the chat that says you've been entered. So test that out now. Let me make sure that it is live. (laughs) Bless you, Carla Marie. Yeah, people are being entered. So even if you're not seeing a confirmation, because there might be too many coming through, uh, right now I've got 35, um, nope, 40 people who are entered in. So. You're all good. We're going to do it at the end of the show. So right around 8.55 on the West Coast, 11.55 on the East Coast, we will draw a winner. It helps a lot if you're here. Yeah, you don't have to be here. Um, but if you are here, that helps. If you're not here, we'll message you. There's a little like DM direct message thing on uh, the Twitch platform, mm-hmm. and we'll do it there. So make sure you check that. Wow, we've got 75 people already that entered the contest. So thank you very much to everyone who is hanging. Again, we are taking a a bada bing shot. What'd you call it, Carla Marie? The bing bang? Bing bang. <laughs> bing bang, bada boom. <laughs> but it's big bang, as in 4th of July fireworks, which I call boom booms. Okay. And So uh, is this the boom boom? It's just, uh, is this now the boom boom room? It is. Okay. It's white rum, dark rum, orange juice, pineapple juice, simple syrup, triple sec, and bitters. All right, well. Cheers to you, Carla Marie. Cheers to everyone. Cheers to everyone who helped us get to almost 300% of the hype train today and And to Seattle Cocktail Club. And to a successful You Look Great store. There we go. Mm -mm -mm. There's a lot of flavor in that, and it's very good. You all right? Mm -hmm. Apparently, she's not okay. Mm -mm. It's gross. How dare you? Are you trying to kill me? <laughs> it's. It was just a lot of liquid and a lot of cold. Mm-hmm. That was easy to take, I'll be honest. But Didn't look it. I'll tell you what. <laughs> sipping on that. I don't recommend. Uh, Court in Spokane and Life is a Hike, thank you very much for your subscription. Now, Ooh, there are good. 90, let's see, 98 people right now entered in for this beach waiver that we're going to give away at the end of the show. There is a benefit. You're either two or three times more likely to win if you are a subscriber 
to this channel than if you are not. You still have a chance. So there is no purchase necessary and no gifting necessary. It, like, adds extra tickets. But, yeah, you get uh, a better chance of winning if you are a subscriber. Now, moving on, since we are done with the money shot right now. Oh. I can go to our list for the day. So I found two very interesting <laughs> things to discuss from the interwebs, Carla Marie. Okay. Obviously, welcome back. We are going to do a quick Disney recap. Um, would you save a dead person's tattoo? Because there is a way to do that now. Like take off their skin? I'll explain in a little bit. And the gift bag from Burger King that turned into $300,000. We're going to talk about both of those today. And of course, type the uh, type exclamation point and the word enter in the chat. Just that exclamation point enter. Then put it in the chat yep. and you will be entered in to win the beach waiver, which is next to you, Carla. If you want to show people what they're winning and explain it real quick. It's the rainbow beach waiver. Um, this is the same so size. I think we say beach waiver and we don't. Yeah, it's a curling iron. It's what I use to do my hair um, almost every day. And this is a one inch. This is the size that I recommend to everyone. And um, okay, you know what? It's the best. Let me explain. Just erase, 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 edit it out. The beach waver is not just a curling iron, but it makes the process of curling your hair so much easier. It's got easy controls, a one inch ceramic barrel, an arrow button. If you're like, well, why would my beach waver, why would my hair curler need an a a arrow button? A hair curler. Right? A curling iron. Why would it need an arrow button? Yeah. That's because it curls your hair for you. No longer do you have to sit there with a round brush and and blow dry your hair or turn it yourself and injure your wrist or hit yourself in the head. The beach waver does it for you. You press the button and it goes okay, it wasn't, like that. It didn't replace the round brush. It replaced. There was a while where we all had like these wands. So it was like yeah. a metal barrel. And we were wrapping our hair around it upside down and doing all these things. And Sarah Potempa, who was a celebrity hairstylist, was speaking to one of the magazines trying to explain how to beach wave with that. And she was trying to describe it and was like, this makes no sense. Mm -hmm. She's like, let me invent it where it does it on its own. And voila, Bam. she did. And uh, patented it and everything. And she is an incredible human. Her and her two sisters uh, work on this. One of them is their lawyer and one of them is like does all the marketing and they're incredible. Um so, yeah, we have some beach waivers to give away. I have another one I'm going to be showing off this week on Instagram. That's a brand new design. They all do the same thing. But yeah. there is. Different and we have the rainbow one. Yep. Uh, let's see. UK Frog 2020 said you can tell Anthony played with it somewhere. <laughs> it's not meant to be. I don't know about that. That would be very painful. Uh, let's see. Miss Peppy Double Zero. First time chat. Thank you for entering cool. the beach waiver contest. Again, 855 on the West Coast. 11.55 on the East Coast. You can fill in the times in between. That is when we are going to do the actual drawing. Please Ms. be here. Miss Peppy, where are you from? Like, tell us a little bit about yourself. If you're going to enter this contest, lady. And you know what, Carla Marie? <laughs> what? I think you should send that clip of me explaining the beach waver to Sarah Potempa. Because not only was I the first person to film for you guys back in the day when she had her warehouse in uh, Jersey City. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty sure I did a good job, and I should be her newest uh, endorser. Well, there's a whole— You were like, uh, this is what I use to curl my hair every day. Blah. There used Blah. to be—there is, and we could do this. It's uh, boys who beach wave is the hashtag, mm -hmm. and it's all men beach waving, like their sisters, daughters, husband, wife's <laughs> hair. Okay. And uh, we should do it with the new model that I have downstairs. We could do that. Do you trust me to do that? No. Okay. Uh, let's see. Miss Peppy's from Maryland. All right. Let's see a demo. We could try it right now. But you did no. your hair already, right? Yes. Okay, so Thank we don't you. have to do that. Thank you Maybe one day saying. when the new one comes out, we'll do a demo and no, I'll try it, it on. Out. It is downstairs. I'll try it on Carla Marie's hair once, you, once it's out of the box, okay. I should say. Moving on. We spent, if you were wondering why we weren't here last week, we spent last week, for the most part, in Disney World. Orlando, Florida. I in have a Disney hangover. <laughs> the heat. In the oven that is Central Florida. Sorry, Miss Peppy said I followed you on YouTube, but I can't wait for posting, so join Twitch. That's awesome. Cool. Uh, yeah, it was um, hot. But, like, I feel like we were so into it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I was, when you look at my screen time, 
on my iPhone. I, I checked it. It was down more than 50%. Oh, yeah, same. We were so in the moment when we were in Disney. Like, I don't have as many photos as I have. I don't have that many photos. Like, when I look back and I'm like, No, I have oh. like 80 photos of one thing. Yeah. Like, the I and I normally don't take pictures of fireworks. But well, when we, the first night we were there, we were at Magic Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I have this new phone. Right, T-Mobile hooked me up with the uh, the Sam not the Samsung, the Pixel. Google Pixel 6, 6 Pro. So like, let me test this thing out. And I started snapping some photos, and they were coming out really, really good. So I just kept doing it. And I would try it. It's a long fireworks show, so I would do it for like a minute, put my phone away, then take it out again. But I have like 80 photos of that. A couple photos of us by the um, the Star Wars ship. Yep. Why, can't, why am I blanking on the name? Han Solo ship. Oh, my God. I'm going to punch oh, no. myself in the head. I didn't see a single second of Star Wars and, and loved Galaxy's Edge. Um, but other than that, I don't really have a ton of pictures. Oh, what song do we Millennium have? Millennium Falcon. She, thank you very much, Jim on Sports. Oh, yeah. You drove it and you sucked. Yeah. So I, I did the... There's... I wasn't on this time. One of two rides you can do in their... What? Sorry. Go ahead. I didn't know what you were explaining. One of two rides that you can do in the Star Wars campus. It's Avengers Campus in Disneyland. It's called Galaxy's Edge. Okay, and Galaxy's Edge in Disney World is uh, you're basically run, you're piloting the Millennium Falcon. And when, there are four people in the pod, and you all have- Six. This guy's unbelievable. There's six. There's when six. we went on the first time, oh, you were a shooter. Pod. Yes. I was an engineer. And I really didn't have to fix anything because my brother and our VIP tour person. Tour guide? Tour guide. We're driving. This girl. <laughs> we're driving. Then you guys wanted to go back on for the people that didn't go on the first time because they were scared to get sick. Mm -hmm. I didn't go on that time. So and I decided to be the pilot. Who did you fly with? Mike? It was me and, uh, yeah, your family friend, Mike. And apparently we are not good pilots no. and we were all over the place. Uh, at one point, I will say we thought the whole mission was over and we were just like looking at each other like, hey, good job. And we started crashing into things. Yeah, my brother got off that and was like, that was bad. Yeah, and that ride, essentially, there are, there's the first row is two pilots, then two gunners, and then two engineers. Mm -hmm. Those are the six people in the pod. And I guess, yeah, everyone has their own job. And the pilots are meant to steer the ship. One goes up and down, the other goes left and right. And I guess we were just all over the place. So we were not very good, which makes the actual like pod that you're in move more and shake more and tilt. I would so, I'm glad I wasn't on that time. It was fun though. Um and I will say we were we were very, very pampered on this trip. Uh Carla Marie's brother splurged and we did the VIP tour. It was which means you do like lightning, the lightning pass or the genie pass. What's it called now? Genie pass. Well, it's the Lightning Lane, but it's the Genie Plus or Genie Pass. Yeah, so we were basically walked to close to the front of most of the lines. Like, we didn't wait for, no. for very many things. So we got to do about 40 rides in, no, over 40 rides in four days. 46 rides in four days. Um, when I tell you that we came back and we had four days, we, had, we came back Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. I was horizontal most of those days like mm. just laying down because it all hit me the heat the flipping upside down like flipping sideways being all over the place non-stop like it hit yeah. but it was one of my if not favorite trips of my life just because of how much we were in the moment yeah. it was for us like a lot of times when we take trips it's about content because we're there for work like even taiwan probably the best trip of my life yeah but i'd we put were that there, at number one probably we were there getting content like this was just we're going to disney there are no rules have fun and i think the one thing you mentioned how your screen time was down yeah and part of that is also because we weren't waiting in lines we're we were going from one place to another with a group you kind of have to have your head up when you're walking yeah. around disney because there's a million people there so we were very lucky in that regard. A question came from, it's Meg, not Megan. Did your feet kill? Nope. I was wearing my Ultra Boost and I was actually good. I mean, I was tired by the end of all of the days, but my feet were fine. So I said this to Anthony. We were out for a walk this weekend and I said how years ago, so my ex's family had a Disney Vacation Club timeshare. We used to go all the time. Those days were the most, like, 
the most uh, rigorous on my body ever. Like, of days of my whole life would be in Disney. So I was, like, prepared. I'm like, oh, my back's going to hurt. My feet are going to hurt. I brought different sneakers so I can switch them out. Did not happen. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, maybe I'm more in shape. And then I realized, no. Because when you're waiting in line for three hours, you're standing there. And you're sitting in, like, weird positions, too. We didn't have that. Leaning. We were just... We truly spent, we were either walking or on a ride, walking or on a ride. And we did 10 hours. Most days were 10, 11 hours. And it was fine. Like, Anthony's checking his Fitbit. Like, well, I'm trying to see the steps. I don't walk like five miles a day, which. Let me see if I can add like it. Didn't seem like a lot. Um, 50, it was about. We were normal. We were over 13,000 steps almost every day. But somehow I had the the smallest amount, which doesn't make sense because I have to walk more. Steps. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we you don't, don't swing your arms a lot when you walk. Maybe, but um, it was a good time. It was really amazing. I see a lot of people asking our favorite ride, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, I've got to put Guardians of the Galaxy at number one, and a very close number two is uh, the Avatar ride in Magic Kingdom. Animal Kingdom. In Animal Kingdom, it's a Magic Animal Kingdom. So. That ride, you basically, you sit in like this motorcycle shaped seat and then you're like locked in. Like some, a pad comes up and hits yeah. you, like pushes on your back, pushes on the back of your legs uh-huh. and keeps you in there. And you're basically in a virtual simulator with 3D glasses on and it's taking you through it's, the Avatar world. If you've been on Soarin' it's at so cool. Disneyland or Disney World, it's the same. Or Wings Over Washington here. Or Wings Over Washington. Our tour guide describes it as Soarin' on crack, mm-hmm. but it's the same, um, like, or no, on steroids. I don't think they said crack at Disney World. <laughs> steroids are also sometimes illegal. It's the same, like, uh, technology of, like, you feel, just you're moving just a little bit, so it feels like you're doing a lot more, but it was incredible. Mm-hmm. Visually, it's just stunning. And then Guardians is like taking Space Mountain because it's a little crazy, (laughs) but adding all of these video screens around you. You don't need glasses on or anything like that. And you feel fully immersed in this storyline that they're telling during the the ride. Now, the rule is you're not really supposed to say what happens whatsoever Mm -hmm. in the ride. Like, even when we were about to get on, there was a a woman who had ridden, ridden it a ton of times and our tour guide was like, don't tell them anything. Like, we had, this was the first time probably since I was a kid that I had gone on a ride in Disney without, like, knowing what it was about. I didn't look anything up. My brother told me that people were throwing up on the ride and getting super sick. So I was like, oh, great. This is going to suck. It was, and, and Guardians is my absolute favorite Marvel movie. So going into this, I was, like, I was in the room where, like, they put you before. I don't know if you saw me. Yeah. And I was like, Oh my god! Oh my god! This is happening! Like they're talking to us. It was so cool, and they, like they do such a good job. And it's crazy to see like this is a new ride in this world of technology that we're in now. And it's like, oh, yeah. this is fucking cool. It's like what Space Mountain felt like when it came out years ago. Also, Tacoma Swifty brings up a good point. She said, "I do love Soren, but I don't love the Gal- uh, the Guardians Drop, former Tower of Terror." So the Guardians ride in. Florida oh. is very different than the Guardians ride in L.A. or in Anaheim. Yeah. Right. In uh, Disneyland. Disneyland. They took Tower of Terror and basically made it a, a Guardians ride. Which, by the way, Tower of Terror is my favorite ride of all time. I will say not that Guardians doesn't beat it. It's just a classic. Mm-hmm. But in Florida, in Disney World, the Guardians ride is a full roller coaster. Sure. You're literally not. That's like it's a. I mean, people know they're getting on a roller coaster, sir. That is a part of the rules. Uh, my favorite thing, though, was Wait, people keep asking what song we had on oh, Guardians. So we we got to do Piss. it twice, Piss. and the only thing, keep in mind, this is the only complaint I have about my entire time in Disneyland or Disney World. Okay, we got the same song both times we rode. Guardians of the Galaxy. There's say, apparently six. Yeah, it like plays in your cart. Mm-hmm. And um, we had I Ran by Flock of Seagulls. I ran so yeah. far. I run so far. Yeah, no, that's not by Flock of Seagulls. Yes, is it, it is. Oh, it is? Okay. But apparently we could have gotten September by Earth, Wind, and Fire, which is like seriously my top five songs of all time. Or Congo, which someone said was so fun. Congo, they got it. Uh, that's the one I was really hoping for because we didn't know until... So we had a tour guide each time that we took it, right? Mm-hmm. That would take us in, and we talked about that before. Um, 
after we rode the ride, they told us there were five other options for yeah. that yeah. for that ride. And the next day that we went, they told us what they were. I wish I never knew the I options. Know. I know. I wish no one told me. Because then it gave me something to look forward to, and I was let down. But again. I was literally on the ride like, no. Again, <laughs> incredible ride, incredible time. Uh, Carla Marie's brother, like, spared no expense. We had no. amazing dinners every night. Uh, the foods that we were able to eat. And someone had asked, I don't know if it was, Mar I think Martha asked for the favorite ride. And then someone else in the chat had asked um, what our favorite park was. Oh, park. And I've got to go with Epcot. Not only does Epcot have the Guardians ride, because the way that they set it up, Epcot, if you've never been, um, you're supposed to kind of tour the world. And you could see Norway and mm -hmm. France and mm -hmm. uh, Germany, Morocco, I believe, is there. Canada is there. And you get to, like, explore little parts of these countries. There's a, a J there's Japan and China yeah. as well. The store in Japan, so cool. Yeah, it was a cool store. And the way that they introduced the oh, Guardians so ride cool. is one of the new, one of the other countries yeah. is, well, what's the, the planet? Uh, Xandar. Xandar. So you're like visiting Xandar, and that is their their ride there. So cool. So that is really cool. I did put on Peter Quill Star Lord's outfit. What am I? I was like, I don't, I wanted to buy that jacket so bad. It's a cool jacket. I've never like been able to nerd out in a situation like that over a movie or anything, mm -hmm. and it was just like, I get it. I get what everyone nerds out about. Yeah. Um, I would say my favorite. Your favorite uh, park. I, I, I love Epcot. It normally is Epcot, but I think just, just because of this trip, my favorite part of this trip was Hollywood Studios. Why? Because Galaxy's Edge is that cool. Like, when you're in there, yeah. you don't, they do such a good job at, you're not in a Disney park. You are in Galaxy's Edge at this you're point. You're in Bantu, which and, we Batu. were- no Batu. No N. No N. Batu? Oh, yeah, Batu. So, we were told that the reason they chose Batu is because it's in the comics- but not in any of the movies so that they had a little more freedom to play around and didn't have to stay true to any specific movie. And once you, and like, literally, like, you cross this line in the park and you're in, a, you don't see anything else outside of Disney. You don't hear anything else. You don't see other rides, whatever. And even the, like, Chewbacca and Kylo Ren and the Storm Stormtroopers, there's no, like, line to meet them they're because they're not around. characters. They're just walking around their planet. And when you go to the cantina, which you've got to like reserve well in advance yeah. because it's a it's a small cantina and you can I think you can spend forty five minutes in it, right? Oh, uh, or an hour. Forty five minutes. I think we had a either way. You get you get a table and you have a time limit. There's a little bit of food and some drinks. Um, the everyone's in character the whole time. But Carla Marie, this comes from marijuana in the chat. There's a really good Guardians video game where you play as all the characters in combat. Would you play that? I guess. Why did you say, I guess, like a weird 12-year-old, I guess? Uh, it's Meg, not Megan said, no, no, sorry, not, it's Meg, not Megan, asked if I was a fan, Allison, asked if I was a fan of Guardians of the Galaxy before going. Yes, it's oh, my yeah. favorite Marvel movie. Favorite, favorite, favorite. Um, let's see. How did you guys like Toy Story Land? Love Toy Story so Land. Cool. The the ride, the Slinky, is it Slink? Slinky. Slinky, Slinky coaster or Slinky roller coaster. It was actually a lot of fun. It's yeah. a small coaster. It's nothing crazy. You're not flipping or spinning, but it's a, it's a good one. Oh, if you go to the cantina, don't get the food, just the drinks. The food sucked. It didn't suck. It was just not, it's not worth it. It's an can... expensive trip. And to the cantina or yeah, to Disney? Oh. The food. Oh. So I don't think it's worth it. I think you're, you're much better off getting a cool, you cocktail. know, cocktail and spending your money on that. Um, but favorite food that we had in the whole park. Oh, man. Parks. The gray stuff, it's delicious. We did have the gray stuff in Bell's Castle, in Beast Castle. Um, no, that's not my favorite though. I don't. That's tough to say because the food is really good everywhere oh, you go. My favorite. It wasn't even mine. Anthony got it the last night at Tiffins, Tiffins, Tuffins in Animal Kingdom. Yeah. What was it called? Tiffins. The uh, soup that you got with popcorn in it. Yeah, they had. What I don't even know what that soup was. It was corn and it was like a, pot a, pot a sweet potato. It had popcorn. So but it was it is very, very good. Uh, let's see. Jordan and Puyallup, did you? Oh, did you try the fuzzy numb? The fuzzy, fuzzy numb, numb. I did. You did. But that someone else had ordered it, right? Two people ordered it. It was a drink on the menu in the cantina in Galaxy's Edge. 
my mouth went numb. It reminded me of the things that they have at T-Mobile Park and yes. that one drink. I forget what it's called. Uh, it ruined everything for like 20 minutes. Everything I put in my mouth burned, hurt. I hated it. Uh, and then someone said, oh, Bridget from Pennsylvania. Bridget from PA said, I work at the Disney store, so I get into Disney for free. Damn. That's great. Because, man, I mean, I, we are super grateful that Carla Marie's brother paid for everyone that went. Um but that trip is expensive. I'll tell you what. For, for, even if you're not doing the VIP stuff, just getting into the park and buying anything is crazy expensive. My kids will probably never get to go to Disney unless their Uncle Billy takes them. <laughs> well, you don't know about that. Maybe we'll get a job one day. Uh, let's see. Mama Sarah said I wanted to get reservations at Yak and Yeti. Yak and Yeti. I've been there before. What is that? That's in Animal Kingdom. Uh, Tacoma Swifty said, is this the steakhouse brother or the race car brother that's super into <laughs> Disney? the same brother. It's the same brother, which is what, how he's able to afford uh, being super into Disney. So, Although he's not a race car brother anymore, right? He sold the team. Yeah. And then we went to Disney. <laughs> yeah. So thank God for that sale. Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah, I forgot about Yak and Yeti. It's really what is, good. What is it? It's a restaurant? It's, a, it's Asian cuisine from what I remember in... Um, Animal Kingdom near Mount near Everest. Okay, Ex- Expedition Everest. I did. I which was so fun actually. I do want to go back, um, and really do a food exploration of Epcot. I know a lot of people go like drinking around the world, and that's great. No, I would I would obviously and, have some drinks. Food and wine festival. You like people do this. You go and you just that's the only park you go to, mm-hmm. and you like make a Florida trip, but you go to Epcot and do that. That's basically what I did with my nieces when we okay. went. Uh, it's August through November. It's three months long now. And they add, I was trying to explain this to you when you were there, like, yes, they have, what is it, the 11 countries, but then they add pop-up stands of other countries that aren't normally in Epcot that are there for food and drink mm-hmm. and wine and whatever. And me, my nieces, and uh, my niece's fiance went to, like, every stand. Every st- I wish there was, like, a pass you could buy. I'm sure there is. The pass was, okay, whose card is it next? And we were doing that at every stand. We were, by the time we got to France... Wasted. Yeah, and but I I think the food is so good, so good. And what I did appreciate was when we went to the um, the Japanese area, right the the place that looks like Japan. I went into this gift shop they had there, and at first I was I was impressed because I was like, wow, they did a really good job making this feel authentic. Mm-hmm. And then when we left, we found out that normally the store has even more things because they only sh- like nothing that they sell there is really it's not like made in america or made in china and reproduced to look like a japanese store these are all things that people buy in japan and our friend menace was actually there recently Mm -hmm. Uh, menace works for the woody show in la and all over the country and he's gone to japan a couple times and he was in that store yeah saying how authentic it felt it's cool being in there and which i thought was really cool and they did have uh, a pokemon section they did i have we have a photo shout out to pikachu also I know we were gone for a week and a lot has changed. I beat Pokemon Emerald while we were on vacation. That was a big day for me. I remember that. Mm-hmm. Did it the first day we were there. I know the first day Anthony brought his uh, Game Boy in his backpack, mm-hmm. thinking he was going to be able to play it in line, but we were too busy running around the park every ride. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought there'd be some downtime, and there really wasn't. Uh, and if you are new to the chat and new to this channel at all or just popped in today and you're wondering why people are typing in exclamation point enter in the chat that is because we are giving away a beach waiver at the end of the show in just about 20 minutes yeah. um, but i do want to get into these oh. other things that we have on the list okay. Marie. and just really quick this is a this is when i will take my kid to disney angeline spokane said she took her daughter desiree to epcot for her 21st birthday that's cool that would be awesome yeah. i also saw someone say they they took their kids when they were 13 and 15 or something like that I'm um, old enough to remember it. Yeah. Where was that? Uh, let's see. Until they were 15 and 16, old enough to remember it. I said to our tour guide, I wouldn't take my kids until they were old enough to ride all the rides. Like, not old enough, tall enough. I which think, makes them having to be older, in my case. I think, well, yeah, I want them to be able to ride everything. I uh, definitely want them to be, able to be able to remember. Like, you took your nephew. Yeah, that wasn't last for year. him. That was for us. And that was mainly because your niece is obsessed. I'm sorry, you took your great nephew. 
who is mom, your niece, um, is obsessed with Mickey Mouse. And she was kind of going for herself using the kid as an excuse, yeah. I think. Which is, use your kids for whatever excuse you can because they're smelly and they cost a lot of money and you should take every advantage of that. Mm. But I think I would want my kids to, A, remember it. Um, I also want them to have some sort of concept of money so they can appreciate it. Yeah. Just be like, hey, we might not do this all the time because this is super expensive. Yeah, and most people can't do this. I don't think I understood money at that age anyway, though. I don't think you fully understand money until you have to make it yourself and you don't have a lot of it. I think the first time I understood it is when I was applying to college and starting to see how much tuition costs. And I was like, yeah, wait. Yeah, but did those numbers make sense to you? Here's when they started making sense. I don't know what, because it was also around the time of like, Getting a, I was like, how much are new cars? Like, I don't know. And I remember being like, wait, one year of college is a brand new car? Mm -hmm. And that's when I started like, this doesn't make sense. Like, things things don't, and that, like, that was when I started realizing. So, like, at 17, but even then, I fully didn't, like, grasp how much it took to <laughs> make that amount yeah. of money. Yeah, I think, and a lot of people will say this, and we're not going to get into the whole, like, college debt, whether it should be forgiven or uh, any of that stuff. But I think the thing you'll hear a lot from people who say, like, yeah, it would be a good idea for this country to relieve some student loans yeah. and some college debt. And we can all go to Disney. Um, not only does it reinvigorate the economy because those students can, instead of spending spending it, paying or paying that to a bank, they can spend it on other things. A lot of people will say, like, oh, well, if you didn't have the money, you should have never went to college. But I think asking someone who's 16 or 17 to fully grasp yeah, the no. re the repercussions of you know, a hundred thousand dollar loan. I don't think anyone fully understands that weight no. at that age. And I think but when we were, when that. we were all getting those loans, like we didn't know what was going to happen. Like now we're like telling people like, don't do this, go to community college. Like your little cousin went to two years of community college, then Montclair state. And she just graduated. Like that is, I wish I did that. Wish I did that. But it wasn't like it was barely presented as an opportunity and if it was it was like looked down upon at that time like oh my god if i go back that's what i would do just from minnesota said i gave my kid german citizenship so maybe he can go to college for free if that's still a thing by then i know i mean my cousins in canada get college for like pennies mm -hmm. because it is uh it is supplemented by the government now moving on we're not going to get into that today because we have more important things to talk about like like taking your favorite dead person's tattoo and making it wall art. Hmm. Now, what would you think that entailed, Carla Marie? Well, it could be like a poster, but what it like, I mean, you can put a decal of a dead person's tattoo. So it's an Ohio based company. So shout out to everyone in Ohio. And it's called Save My Ink Forever. And it preserves people's tattoos after they die. But, like, is it a photo of their tattoo or are we cutting off their skin? So, um, it says that the owners, morticians Michael Sherwood and his son Kyle, worked for years to develop a method to preserve the skin while keeping the art immaculate. The idea came when they were having drinks with friends. I can't imagine how that conversation started. To get to that point. No, so I'm putting skin on my wall. Uh, one had lost their father recently and told the duo he wanted to preserve his dad's tattoo. So here, I can show you that. <laughs> and I'll put it on the screen. That's like an actual dead person's tattoo. Wait, you're going to put it up there for everybody? Yeah. Like I see so they started the company, Save. what is it called? Save My Skin Forever? Why couldn't they just take a picture of it? I don't know. The entire process There's takes no about three to four months. It involves surgically removing the skin from the corpse within 72 hours of their passing. So you have to know right away, like, hold on, I want to save that tattoo. Hold on, let me finish. It can even be done after the embalming process. And the morticians say their process does not interfere with traditional viewing or uh, cremation. Well, if you're Jewish, can you now be buried in a Jewish cemetery if your family cuts off your tattoo? Well, I don't think you're, technically, I don't think you're allowed to to be buried in a Jewish cemetery if you have tattoos to begin with. But they don't know if you take it off. I don't know. The gods won't know. Yeah, I don't know. Hold on. How is it legal to have human skin on your wall? That's a great question. I don't know. Just put that up there. Put what up there? You're going to put the picture you did? Oh, yeah, I did it. I did it for a no, second. No, 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 like on the... Oh, I have it on my phone. I'll... 
Oh. I'm not. It's fine. No okay. one needs to see it. You can Google it yourself. Do the you company think- is called. What did I say it was? Save my Save my Ink Forever. Save my Ink Forever. If you want to search it yourself. Do you think that my grandchildren and great grandchildren? Oh, well, I probably won't be alive for those. Would want my your hibiscus? My hibiscus no. that has been. 18 times attempted to be removed, just slapped on their wall. I don't know. A better question, Carla Marie. Yeah. Uh, your sister, Ashley Marie, mm-hmm. has not the live, laugh, love tattoo. She, she has, has the laugh. Laugh. Her other friends got the good words. Mm-hmm. Live and love. She has laugh. Just a little laugh. Would you save Ashley Marie's laugh Actually, yeah. Tattoo? Probably because of the irony. Or like my enjoy your life. But when do they cut it off? Like, am I laying there in my coffin? Why do you lay? I think, yeah, you like Well, this is how I sleep, always. Yeah, I don't know if I'd want them to put my hands here. I want them to put my hands behind my back so I look like I'm chilling. Yeah, and put me in a beach chair. (laughs) Just propped up. (laughs) Tattoos chopped off and everything. I'm going to put a poll up. Uh, Let's see, how do I do that here? Got it. What? But, like, if you're old and they take your tattoo skin, do I have wrinkly skin on my I wall? think they probably stretch it to make it look good. <laughs> Would you save a dead person's tattoo? What about my, my mom? Yes. No. My mom has, a like, an Italian heart. Oh, my sister also has an Italian heart. My dad has uh, dolphins on his back. Would you save any of those? I don't know. I don't see. I don't like saving things to begin with. I can't like, imagine. What am I going to do a dad's tattoo yeah, skin? I can't imagine needing to also find a place for tattoo skin. So I'm going to be a hard no. I'm not saving anyone's tattoo. I know. But here's where I think. Anyone's skin. Here's where my head goes is like, but what if one day I regret not saving it? Like you only have Why? this one window to save it. Yeah, you got 72 hours to decide. Okay. So let's say I had, uh, okay. let's say Carla Marie. How much does this cost? I've got a tattoo of Max on my arm, <gasps> right? And then tomorrow, bam, get hit by a car, dead. T- terrible timing. I didn't even get a chance to, like, watch the tattoo heal. <laughs> Nothing. Well, I don't but, want your half-healed tattoo. So, I okay, let's say it just healed, right? Perfect picture of Max on my arm. Bam, I get hit by a car. Do you save dead Anthony's Max tattoo? I think so. Why? How mad would you be that I cut into your bicep? I mean, but, at least my bicep lives on forever. Hold on. What are you I looking up? I can't handle oh, all these skin. And they're like framed. They're framed on nice like black But that's skin. matte. Why? I don't want to see the skin. I just want to see mean, the. Have you ever worn leather? That's skin. Do you think it smells under the frame? I don't know. I'm sure they preserve it and it's like. Shop. Um, what am I oh, this is a good question from Life is a Hike. Oh, Why no, not just get the same tattoo instead of saving it? Well, that's... Maybe you don't want it on yourself. Yeah. No way. Oh, my God. I have how much money it is. How much is it? Save my ink forever. Reservation price. Guide for insurance. So I could say I, as a live human, can buy this for my oh, family. Okay. Uh, what do you want to know first? A full body suit? <laughs> so your full skin suit. All right, we'll start Where with this. Where the hell would you put that? An individual tattoo. Starting price. $1,599. That's actually a lot less than I thought it would be. A full arm sleeve. 5000 to $7,500. Each arm. Here's the other thing to think about. And I, I know I put the picture up uh, quickly on the screen earlier from my phone. Do a lot of these tattoos, don't you think some of them wouldn't look the same once they're off of the body? Like, if I had a shoulder tattoo, <laughs> and you take it and you're flattening it on a into a frame, it's like, gonna it's not going to look right. No. Uh, a full leg sleeve? I think if you're a rock star, maybe this works. Well, a full leg is 5000 sorry, 10000 to 15000 That's That's a lot of money. Uh, full chest or back, fifteen to twenty thousand. A full. By the way, the poll is almost over. If you have not entered the poll, do that now. I mean, she taught me. I just keep thinking the skin is going to shrivel up. Well, no, I'm sure they preserve it. Uh, let's see. Ninety-eight <laughs> percent said no. They would not save a dead person's tattoo. Here's the only, the only reasonable thing that I can think this would be used for. You're a huge rock star. 
you've already been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And maybe you've got like a cool arm sleeve. They can you can choose to save your arm sleeve and have it hanging in your exhibit at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Okay. That would be I agree. the only thing and it would actually be kind of cool. Okay. Well, a full body suit is 80 like Silence of the Lamb? 80 to 100,000. dollars Or you tie someone up but in your basement and you make them wear lotion. They have insurance plans. What do you mean? So, oh, so you can pay like per year. So it tells you your age and if you are a male or female because apparently male skin is more money than female skin. I think no, I think it's more skin. Men, maybe it might be more. I think we're normally insurance plans are higher for guys because we're more likely to die doing stupid things. Yeah, but if you die sooner, this should be cheaper. No, well, they, I guess they, no, they need to okay. make more money off so of it. So it would cost me $15 a month for the rest of my life, I guess. <laughs> yeah, because if you're old, it's – if you're 50, it's $98 a month for a female. Not old, but – You've got to really love your own tattoos. Oh. There was someone. Oh, there's monthly payment. Who asked about I cannot. tattoos from the Holocaust. I, I saw it come through. And that is actually oh. an interesting, unfortunate mm -hmm. piece of history to save. So something like that I could see. I know um, certain uh, Native American cultures, mm -hmm. they have like a lot of those tattoos have a lot of meaning. And maybe the the artists who design them aren't around as much. Maybe we don't have as many of right. them as we used to. So maybe something like that. For like historical purposes, I can see it. Which I guess goes back to my Rock and Roll Hall of Fame thing. It's a historical purpose. But I don't think I'd want to go into... Like what if you went on a date with someone and you went back to their place, oh. and they're like, oh, you see no. that artwork on the wall, or you you compliment. Like, oh, this is really nice artwork you have. And they're like, oh, yeah, that's my dead mom's back. <laughs> like, that'd be weird. I'm just curious as to how we've gone this far in society, and this is happening now. Like, I feel like, why didn't anyone think of this sooner? I don't know. Like, Kurt Cobain's tattoos? Apparently, it took some drinks and a couple morticians to sit down and have this conversation. Azoric. Brian, I will say that I didn't know it was going to stop at 50 when I said if you're old. I was scrolling, <laughs> thinking he was going to go to much older. All right, moving on, though, uh, from the dead person tattoos onto $300,000 for a Burger King employee. Yeah, what happened? So this is how it started, and this is an interesting story to follow. I guess there was an employee, older gentleman, uh, who's worked at this Burger King in Las Vegas for 27 years. 27 years and has not missed a day of work. Damn. Has never called out, nothing like that. <clears throat> and to celebrate his 27th year, his managers at Burger King gave him a gift bag. And in the gift bag, there was some movie tickets, some candy, I guess a Starbucks cup. That was, one of them got on their morning commute from Starbucks to a Starbucks and his daughter posted the video and said, hey, this is, you know, my dad um, had, took this job when he got custody of me and my sister, mm -hmm. hasn't missed a day of work. And a lot of people online were like, wait, Burger King only gave this guy this weird gift bag for 27 years of service and not missing days of work, yada, yada, yada. So his daughter started to go fund me. With the idea of raising about $200. It is close to $300,000 now. Which I'm pretty sure means this guy does not have to go back to work at Burger King. No. Um, but the interesting thing is how many people got mad. Which is this guy's it's in this guy's benefit, right? He made $300,000 because people got angry at Burger King and wanted oh, right, to right. help him out with financially. Um, but... I don't think the managers at Burger King had any other options. No. Right? Like, like, these are managers that probably spent money out of their own pocket. These guys work there longer than they have, probably. Yeah. But as a company, right, you would think, like, corporate would be like, hmm, this person's worked here this long. We should honor them in some way to prove that we care about the longevity of our employees and how long they work here and blah, blah, blah. Yes. And I know that a lot of the – a lot of – Big corporations do try to use those stories and be like, oh, look at this right. person's been here for 30 years and exactly. they, they rose the ladder. But 
do you think even if someone in Burger King's like C-suite, right? If one of the executives found out that this guy has been a cashier and a cook for 27 years, you could make the argument. They'd be like, dude, you're not supposed to be in that job for 27 years. We were hoping that you'd do something else at some point in your like life. What? I don't know. I don't know. I think it's great that he's been able to hold a job that long. That's rare. I don't think there's some, anything wrong with having that job for 20 No, no, no. I mean. All I'm saying is I don't know if the, the Burger King brass, if you will, cares that they have a cook oh. there for 27 years or a cashier there for 27 years. They probably anticipate those jobs being very, like, high turnover. Correct. Uh, let's see. There's a lot of people saying it was local management that did that, obviously. Like, yeah. I don't think corporate would have really done anything. Which clearly they haven't. They should have. Looked at some, not at tw- like at 25, right? And been like, oh my God, this person, like there should be a way for local managers to tell corporate, hey, we've had someone here for 25 years. Like, yeah. And there might, I, I bet you that th- one of their corporate managers, maybe his shift manager or the store manager or the franchise owner probably reached out and heard nothing back. Yeah. Cause we know that happens a lot in corporate structures. You reach out you, with an awesome idea or someone you want to be nice to or show your appreciation of. And you just get nothing back because it's not worth that executive's time to even worry about it. Uh, let's see. Meg, enjoy your time at the chiropractor. But if you want to wait for three minutes, we are going to do the drawing for the beach waiver. Yes. In three minutes. So. But you could still win if you're not here. Yeah. And UK Frog 2020 said a job is a job. Good on him for being there for so long. I absolutely agree. Mm-hmm. I mean, my parents worked at their job for. 30 something years and mm-hmm. maybe got a plaque. My, so my dad's a jeweler and he's self-employed. So no one's giving him, no, you know, uh, anything, any sort of gift for being at a job for that long. But I know that a lot of the things he sells a lot of watches to managers and company owners and executives who do things like that for receptionists who have been there for 15 years. It's usually like 15, 20, 25, 30. When Anita, who worked at iHeart, mm-hmm. left after all her years of retirement, it was Elvis that gave her something. It wasn't. Do we know for sure that iHeart corporate didn't do anything? We don't know for sure. I don't know. I mean. But Elvis gave her, he gave her like a trip or something, right? Based on track record. Yeah. I'm going to guess they did nothing. Didn't he work with Norwegian to give her something? Yeah, I think so. Something like that. I could be making that up, but. But she's working there again. Uh, let's see. My mom has been at her work as an OT. What is an OT? Occupational therapist, maybe? Mm-hmm. For 20 years and has hardly gotten a raise over the years. Lee, I've been with my company for 15 years and I just got a plaque. What do you even do with a plaque? Like, let's say you're at Starbucks, right? And you're maybe even have like a managerial job at Starbucks. You do that for 15 years, 20 years. Well, I have my college diploma. It's at home. (laughs) Are you really, is anyone putting up a plaque from their corporate job that says like, I've been here for X amount of years? No, I think if it was an award. An award is different. Like we have our, oh, it's not there anymore. Oh yeah, we do. We have our best of 425 magazine award hanging up, not hanging up. It's a statue. Um, And I think the bigger the company is, the less of a chance they're going to do something for you, something meaningful. Mm -hmm. I think the smaller the company is, like that's normally who goes to my dad's store are people who own their own companies um, or have, you know, executive jobs in smaller companies that do really well. And they're the ones that are saying, oh, we have, we've had this receptionist or this salesperson here for 15 years. Let's at least get them, you know, a citizen watch or it's not a Rolex, right? They're not spending hundreds of thousands of dollars, but they're getting something nice. Yes. That is usable. Fred the mailman next year will be 25 years for me and I'll get a attaboy. (laughs) Yeah. And maybe, maybe a trip. I don't know. A trip would be nice for an employee. Yeah, I'd rather that than a watch. If you said, hey, we're isn't getting- it a write off for companies because you're buying gifts? Uh, I mean, everything's a write off for companies. Uh, the black <laughs> ends up hidden above the toilet. Ooh, what? D in Palm Beach. I have a five year plaque and got my third week of vacation. That's a great, great gift for showing your support for a company is an additional week. Or at least a couple Showing extra days for an employee. of vacation. Uh, now, do you know what time it is, Carla Marie? Game time. It is game time. 8.55. 
Last chance. I'm going to set a timer. 45. Now I'll do a minute. One minute to get your entries in before we close the drawing. All you've got to do is type in exclamation oh, point sorry. and the word sorry. enter. Exclamation point and the word enter. My chiropractor is going to be like. And you will be entered in to win. The Beach Waver. Real quick, Carla Marie, the Beach Waver is behind us. Explain what it is. It is a wand to use to curl your hair. It is the most coveted hair product in the hair industry. And what's so special about it? It's a rainbow one. No, it turns itself. You keep forgetting the main part of the Beach Waver (laughs) is you don't have to curl your hair yourself. You just hit a button and it spins. Yes. You are the worst marketer for Beach Waver I've ever the seen. The people know what it is. Oh, man. Julie, 24 where you, seconds. Julie, where are you from? First time chatter. Got a yeah. couple more people. 15 seconds, 14. My chiropractor today is going to be like, ma'am, your body is crooked. Five seconds, exclamation point, and the word enter. No space, nothing like that. Put it in. Exclamation point and the word enter. Timer is done. Oregon. Closing the giveaway in three, two, one. Bam. All right. All right. Now we draw a winner. 154 people have entered. It's so cool seeing people that I don't like. Phyllis from, nope, New Mexico. Lexi from... Lexi from Lexi. That's not a from in there. No, I, uh, <laughs> I don't know why you said I was looking for the from. Drawing a winner. Drown you out. Congratulations. Oh, Gina. <laughs> Gina, if you are still in the chat, please let us know. She may have left. It's okay. It's you know, it's always a bummer when you're at a raffle and the person leaves <laughs> that was something we used to have to do for like uh, all of our promotions events we'd have all these raffles for random things and we would tell people all the time you have to be here to win and we would tell them the time just like we did on this show and we didn't say how to be we would go through no we tell them the time though oh, all right. we would end up going through like 30 names sometimes i know be like jeff p are you here going once going twice and there's only like six people there so sometimes we would take out all the names that weren't there, throw the names that were in, and just do it again. Well, congrats to Gina. Uh, we will get this out to her. We do have other prizes we're going to be doing this month. We do have some Young Nails kits. We've got That's some Thursday. more Beach Waivers. Uh, we may also have some old school You Look Great merch to be giving away. Oh, cool. Found that out this morning. Uh, Carla Marie, this is actually a great question from It's Meg, Not Megan. Do you have a code? For the beach waiver. I do. It's 10% off. It's called the it's called the code is Carla Marie Wave. All it's one word? All one word. And it works on top of sale items as well. That code. So if something's on sale, Carla Marie Wave will also work. All right. So check that out. And created by Cooper. Seems like she is excited for the Young Nails gift pack. Mm-hmm. Um, I see her all the time in their Twitch channel. So that wasn't that close. You made it seem like it was this close. Very close. Which it was not. Thank you for hanging out with us today. We had almost 200 people here, I think, the whole time, which is pretty cool yeah, to see. Yeah, it's awesome. So thank you for welcoming us back. Thank you for the hype train earlier in the show. We will be back on Thursday. Like Carla Marie said, the uh, kit from Young Nails will be up for grabs that day yep. as well. Anything else, uh, Anything left, Carla Marie? Kelsey Gramp. I do that code every time. You should know that. Email them. Peace out. Thanks for shopping. You look great.